What's up guys, Kyle here again, and today is a sad day because I'm selling one of my favorite amplifiers in the world, and I'll tell you why. Let's do it. All right, hope you guys are doing great out there today. If this is your first time here at my channel, my name is Kyle and what I do is I take awesome high gain amplifiers, guitars, caps, speakers, pickups, overdrives, record them with a simple setup and I give you the unprocessed audio on your end. So if you're into that sort of thing, hit the like button and subscribe on the way out so you don't miss any more of my stuff. Thanks. Today, we're gonna do something a little different though, which is just kinda talk. So if you're not into that, you're probably gonna wanna click off of this video now. But as I mentioned in the intro of this video, I am selling one of my favorite amplifiers in the world. This is the Metabarba M0 Overdrive. This is an all hand wired, top spec, top quality amplifier, custom made in Italy. This is a very expensive amplifier and it's also a very, very good sounding amplifier. And if you guys checked out my original demo when I got this amp, probably, been almost a year and a half now. It's kind of crazy to think about. But you would know that I absolutely love this thing because what it is is essentially a Soldano SLO 100 circuit, but tweaked to have a little bit more of a Marshall mid-range aggression. And it also has a negative feedback control on the front panel, and it's got a depth control on the front panel. Two things that the original SLO is missing. This thing also has massive, custom, super high quality transformers in it and it comes loaded with E34L power tube. So it really kind of sets itself apart in a couple ways from the SLO, making it very much its own thing, but obviously heavily inspired by the Super Late Overdrive. But the main reason that I wanted to make this video is to kind of discuss with you why, why would I sell one of my favorite amplifiers? It doesn't really make sense, right? Especially from a guy who just seems to hoard and collect every amplifier that they get their hands on, right? That's, I feel like that's kind of the impression that I tend to give off and I totally understand it, especially because anytime I make a video about an amp and I really enjoy it, but then you guys see it up for sale on my Instagram page or you see it for sale on Facebook or something, I get, you know, tons of comments from people going, well, if you liked it so much, why would you sell it? I always knew that you were a shill, just paid to say that you like an amplifier and then you put it up for sale. You, man! And I am fully prepared for those comments and even, you know, to an extent, if you're not that familiar with what I do, which is basically just try to pick up used amplifiers when I see them locally or when I see them for a good enough deal that I can just move them on when I'm done with them and put them here on the channel. That's basically how the channel started in the first place. Then I would understand why you would make those comments. I get it. And being that this amp is one of my favorites that I have ever played, especially when I first played it, it just absolutely floored me, it blew me away. I know that a lot of you guys are gonna be asking, why would I sell it? Why would I sell an amp that I am just completely enamored by? Well, I will give you a very good reason. When I got this amplifier from Pierangelo at Metabarba, he actually sent me an M0 overdrive and he also sent me a Trinity. Now what the Trinity is, is basically a three channel version of this amplifier with separate EQ controls, separate masters, and MIDI functionality built into the amp. So overall, they're extremely similar amplifiers and I actually did a comparison of the two where I compared them back to back, compared the tones, got them sounding nearly identical and basically came to the conclusion that the only difference in the sound seems to come from the difference in power tubes because the Trinity that I personally got was loaded with 6L6s, but you can put E34Ls in them if you'd like to. So of course, the collector in me and, you know, being somebody who wants to support Metabarba because they supported my channel and I think that they make a fantastic product. Pierangelo has been an awesome supporter of my channel pretty much since it started. So Pierangelo, if you are watching this, thank you very much, man. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for the support that you have given me. So just in the spirit of full disclosure, yes, I did receive a discount to purchase the amplifiers, but, the whole deal in the beginning was just that Pierangelo wanted to send them to me as demo units. Once I was done, I would ship them over to the dealer JP in California and they would be sold as new amplifiers to whoever purchased them. So there was never any pressure, there was never any incentive for me to make a positive review for these amps. I just did because I thought that they were excellent. 
But with that being said, I liked them so much that I asked Pier Angelo if I could purchase one of them and he actually said, hey, if you want to buy both of them, I will give you a discount. So that is what happened. And for the longest time, I didn't even think about letting either one of them go because I liked them so much. But I found over the last six to eight months or so, I have been using the Metzabarba stuff for my band Human Animal. And I have been leaning towards using the Trinity for pretty much everything for one reason. The Trinity has push button functionality on the front to control everything that you want, including the effects loop, including the built-in boost, switching back and forth between volumes, switching back and forth between master volumes. Whereas the M0 Overdrive just has your basic functionality as in the channel switching is built onto the pedal, much like the older SLOs, and then you have your switches on the front here that control the bright and the boost. So it's a little bit more old school in its functionality. And overall, that's not something that typically I would even really consider. You guys know I'm a belligerent amateur. I generally dial in one tone and go, but I kind of wanted to future-proof myself. The Mezza Barba Trinity is my tone. That is my tone for Human Animal. That is my amp for that band moving forward. And knowing that, I wanted to have the one with the most functionality in case we ever did go in a direction where I started using effects in the effects loop, where I started doing any sort of channel switching, where I started doing any sort of master volume switching for leads. And on top of that, because I am a belligerent amateur, one of the things that I like better about the Trinity is the fact that I don't need the foot switch to tap into every function on the amplifier. So for me, I can click each button on the amp that I want, have everything set up exactly as I would like it to be, and I don't need an external foot switch to do so, which means that's one less thing that I have to haul to the studio, it's one less thing I have to haul to practice, that's one less thing that I have to haul to live shows. And that is essentially the only reason why I chose the Trinity over the M0 Overdrive, and basically why the M0 Overdrive is just kind of redundant, which is really my main point. Guitarists tend to have a lot of redundant gear and I am more guilty of that than anybody out there. I kind of have this terrible habit of when I like something, instead of being happy with that one thing, I tend to want to go get four more of something similar. And I know a lot of my friends in the guitar community who like to collect gear and experiment with stuff are very similar. Once they find something they like, instead of just settling with it or maybe trying to find something that complements it, they end up with more of the same. And really coming to the realization that I just have way too much stuff lately, I have way too much similar things I could really pare down and kind of let some of those things that are too much of the same thing go in order to fund different stuff for the channel. And that's essentially the only reason that I am selling this amp, guys. This amp is fantastic. I have loved it the entire time that I have used it. One of my favorite tones, that I have ever been able to dial in, period. It's, it just is an incredible sounding amplifier, which makes it really hard for me to let go, especially as I see it sitting here next to me with those beautiful red transformers. Uh, I would play through it for you, but I know that if I play through this amp, I'm going to have serious seller's remorse. And I don't wanna do that to myself. I've already mentally parted with this thing and I just don't want to, you know, reattach myself to it because I've had a bad habit of doing that in the past. So with that being said, I'm gonna give you a little clip from my review video of this amplifier just so, you know, if you're tuning in to hear what it sounds like, you can do that. So here's how it sounds. That's magical. So yeah, the amp sounds incredible, guys. Again, it's it's. I know I've said that multiple times throughout this video, but uh, I really do love it. If you guys haven't checked out Metza Barba and you're in the market for something SLO inspired, but you tend to like a little bit more of the Marshall-y thing, check out one of these amps, man. It's gonna do exactly that. It's gonna give you all that SLO goodness, but with a little bit of that Marshall aggression. It's really the perfect marriage of the two. So the point of this video really is to say that uh, 
I am fortunate in that I have too much of a good thing. I have too many amps that are too similar to each other. I have too many pieces of gear that kind of serve the same purpose. And with that realization, I should move these along to somebody who's gonna get a little bit more use out of them. And I should take, you know, what I get from these to put into other stuff for the channel, other amps you guys wanna see, other gear in general. And that's really the only reason that I'm moving this thing along. So if you guys have had similar experiences, have you had to do something like this in the past where you have multiple pieces of gear that are really similar, that you really, really love, and you kind of came to that realization of, you know what? Maybe I don't need three 5150s that, you know, all in my mind serves different purposes, but in reality are really the same thing. Or are you just a person of simplicity and you've this thought has never even crossed your mind to have more than one of something? Because I, I can tell you that's it's uh, it's a flaw that I have. I know that it's a flaw. It's just this weird way of thinking that I'm trying to curb. And I know that there are a lot of people out there who see the wall of amps behind me or see some of the, the gear that I have for the channel and they go, why would you have so much of the same thing? I get that, man. I get why you would ask that question and you have a very fair point. So if, uh, if you're on either side of the spectrum, I'm kind of curious to hear from you guys. Let me know down in the comments. This has just been a discussion video. I hope that it wasn't too boring. If you liked it, if you like stuff like this, hit the like button, consider subscribing to the channel if you're not already, and leave me a comment if you would like to see more videos like this or if you don't wanna see any more of them at all. Fair play to you either way. Hope to hear from you guys in the comments. I'll meet you down there to talk about it. Thanks so much for watching. Kyle here again. We'll see you next time. You know what this wall is missing? Another ant. There we go.